Kratos is back, guys. And this week, they're talking about, yes, my favorite, combat. Let's go. From a combat perspective, I always, and I still feel, like the meat and potatoes of any God of War game is combat. My name is uh, Roberto Clemente, uh, all my friends call me Bert. Uh, I'm a senior combat animator here at Sony Santa Monica. My name is Kim Wynn and I'm a gameplay animator. Hi, I'm Sabra and I'm a senior VFX artist on God of War Ragnarok. My name is Grace Pan and I'm a gameplay animator in God of War Ragnarok. Hi, I'm Steven Ohawa GBA, combat designer on God of War. And I create interesting and memorable creatures that players like to attack and defend against. As an animator, you gave life to characters. You make them move, you gave them personalities, you gave them weight. My role as a VFX artist is to put the power behind a move. You are in control of fire and earth and water and wind. Whether you are throwing your axe or on the receiving end of an enemy spell, VFX is what really gives the movement and the danger to every move that a character or enemy makes. I work really closely with the design team and the tech art team on this project specifically. We actually work a lot with camera, along with the guidance of our great camera team. So I find myself doing fight choreography sometimes. One of the most challenging parts about being a combat designer isn't the technical implementation of creating a creature, but it's really navigating that line between frustrating and engaging. We want to make something that makes players lean forward and focus and really try hard against that enemy and feel good about overcoming that, but we don't want to make them feel defeated if they can't figure something out. And then it feels rewarding when you win, not because it was impossible, but because it was fun and engaging. After the last game, we've heard the community cry out for more mini-bosses, bigger creatures, and enemy variety. And this time, we really leaned into that. So in God of War Ragnarok, you're going to be traveling to all nine realms. And each realm is going to have like its own theme of enemies that are very unique to that space. For example, in Alfheim, we're familiar with the Dark Elves. But this time around, we're going to be fighting Light Elves, such as the Light Elf Warrior. One of the key learnings from the last God of War game is we don't have to think about the camera and how close combat is going to feel. We already have that knowledge, so we can build upon the close camera that we have. And we can iterate on enemies, creating more interesting scenarios. In the last game, Atreus was just starting to fight alongside Kratos, and he was learning from the master tactician. So in this game, he's trying to prove himself a little bit more, and we built upon those mechanics with him. The previous God of War, Atreus was still a kid, right? So he has a lot of dependency on his father. And for this game, you will see Atreus moving more independently on his own as a companion. In regards to VFX for Kratos, I think what the players really love is the powerfulness of it. When you are playing as Kratos, you really do feel like the God of War. And moving into Ragnarok, we want to really make something bigger, make it stronger, make it more of a spectacle. You want them to be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that the Blades of Chaos could get even better, but look at that. So as Kratos gets more powerful, he's going to have access to newer combos and newer abilities that will increase the combat depth of each weapon. For the Blades, one of the moves that I've really enjoyed from previous God of Wars is the combat grapple, and we're going to be bringing that with a new twist. I'm very excited for players to try the blade grapple traversal moves. That brings so much more speed into the movement and the dynamic feel to it. One of the ways we've expanded Kratos combat this time around is we've given more utility and choice to his shield loadout. If you are a parry person, you could really go for a shield that gears towards parrying. If you're a big blocker, then you could choose a shield that will really match your playstyle. One new mechanic or element that I'm really excited about is these combo finishers. Building up the stun meter this time around is going to lead to different ways to basically decapitate the enemy. 
you're going to be able to choose, you know, which weapon you want to have when you kill a guy. Another feature that we've added for Kratos is his new pre-fall attacks. So you could jump off a ledge, and if there's an enemy below you, you could slam down on him. There is such an emphasis on verticality in some of these fights that it's super engaging. And as Kratos, now that you have so much mobility and that you can also take advantage of that verticality, I think it just adds such another interesting layer to a fight. In God of War Ragnarok, we've enhanced the Kratos and Atreus duo. He's going to initiate a little bit more, be aggressive. He's going to fight alongside you and sometimes even surprise you with his combo abilities too. Some of the new expanded companion actions that you'll see Atreus do leverage the fact that he's older now, he's bigger now. And he's different from Kratos, so his magic has a different flavor. Not only that they fight side by side together, um, there are also a lot of mini games and you know player interaction moments. For example, like the puzzle systems and the set pieces, you definitely will see a lot more collaborations between father and son. There is so much that goes into building a big set piece. You basically iterate and iterate and iterate, and it takes testing and just seeing what works to really figure out the personality of something. Basically, every department gives it their all to make things really spectacular. <laughs> There were a lot of different times that I would look back at God of War games just through the ages before 2018. There were so many amazing, huge boss fights and set pieces that it was a huge inspiration for me on my time on this project. For the old father! Our design philosophy for creating new and memorable enemies is basically making them a combat puzzle, similar to like chess, and focusing on the chess pieces. Each piece has its own theme and its own use. You need to be able to see what's happening in an instant and be able to react as the player. There's a couple of different ways that we go into making an attack very readable for the player. Sometimes we add a signature audio cue, or we'll add the different rings, such as what we did in the last game, that lets you know that this attack is unblockable, you need to dodge it. There's so many different ways that the effects really helps not just show what an enemy is about to do, but show who the enemy really is. Everything you design has to be surrounding the essence of the character and a story. It's what makes it believable and memorable in the first place. I think what I'm most excited about is for players to experience the diversity of enemies that this game has to offer. You will be fighting everything from small little creatures to things that will take up the entire screen. All of their designs run the gamut. I think each one looks so much different from the next one, and each of them have their own play styles and their own little fantasies that go into it. And so I think if you are really into Norse mythology, you'll be very interested to see how Sony Santa Monica has taken some of these creatures and interpreted them for God of War. Everything that goes into the game, there's emotion behind it and intent behind it. And by the time it gets to you, everything that you've seen that you're going to play and experience has been sweated over, bled over, tested, and it's fun to play. Guys, if the first game had some good combat in it, exactly like they say in the trailer, this just elevates upon what they already did in 2018's God of War. You can comment down below, like and subscribe. I will catch you guys on the next one.